but as we've worked in these communities, it's really opened my eyes further to that, to the problems and to the lack, especially protein that some of these food pantries receive. We were at a food pantry in Iowa a few weeks ago, and they actually made a comment to us as we were dropping off ground beef that they hadn't had ground beef in their freezer for almost seven years. And so we're thrilled to be able to supply them that consistent access now, but it is a problem and it's a problem across, across the country in these small rural food pantries. Hey, hey, it's Shay Keister, and I'm your host and the founder of Casual Cattle Conversations, a global rancher education company that strives to bring honest thoughts and conversations from ranchers and leaders to other ranchers. Be sure to follow Cattle Convos on social media to have more in-depth conversations around the ranching business and lifestyle brought to you. If you are ready to take your operation to the next level and improve your lifestyle too, send me a message about my Rancher Mind group. Rancher Minds are monthly roundtable discussions for ranchers to learn from peers and experts and leave the call with actionable advice to make changes on their own operations. With that, let's see who our guest is today and what experience and advice they have to offer you to improve your own operation. Well, good morning, Wayne and Shelby. I'm excited to have you on the show. So to start off, I mean, for the audience's sake, we're going to be talking about Cactus Cares and a little bit about how you're tackling food insecurity in America, which I think is amazing. So to start off, would one of you or both of you talk about what Cactus Cares is and kind of your roles within the company? Well, First off, thank you very much for having us. We appreciate the opportunity to tell the story about Cactus Cares. And uh, we look forward to uh, your listeners uh, hearing about this and maybe joining us in that, uh, that uh, fight to uh, address food insecurity in the United States. So I'll begin and then I'll kick it over to Shelby. My name is Wayne Craig and I'm the executive director of Cactus Cares. Uh, I've been with Cactus Feeders. Uh, for 12 years now. My original role was uh, Vice President of Technology. And then a few years ago, I moved over to this uh, nonprofit role that we call Cactus Cares. My name is Shelby Paget, and I'm the Director of Programming for Cactus Cares. My time with Cactus actually started in 2017 when I served as a summer intern, working then on what was called the Hunger Fund Project, So Cactus Feeders has always been very generous in their communities, and they really wanted me as an intern to do some research on how they could make that giving a little bit more uniform across all of their business divisions, and then was excited to come back in 2019 and join Wayne working with what is now Cactus Cares, and we are a 501c3 public charity nonprofit, and we're focused on four different pillars of support. So those pillars would be community renewal, scholarships and education, leadership, and then the largest pillar and the one we're really going to spend the most time talking about today would be our hunger relief efforts. So with all that, Cactus Cares is really doing a lot to make a big impact. Would you talk a little bit more about the origin of Cactus Cares and how it is you know, tied to cactus feeders, but separate. So talk about the origin of that and the, per- the original founding purpose. Well, and uh, in order to talk about the origin of uh, cactus cares, I think it's important to talk about the origin of cactus feeders. Uh, cactus feeders was founded in 1975. We're a beef and pork production company. And both Shelby and I, I even today, uh, we work for the for-profit side. We have responsibilities on the internal and external communication. And everything that we do and, and the support of us comes from the cactus feeders or the for-profit side. Uh, Cactus Feeders has always been, it's always been important to be part of our community. Uh, In uh, 1975, when Paul Engler founded Cactus Feeders, uh, one of the first feed yards he had was in Cactus, Texas, and then that grew to over 10 feed yards, and we produced 1.1 million head of cattle. 
Uh, in 2014, uh, we got into the port business and we founded uh, another company of ours called Cactus Family Farms. And we produce about 900,000 market hogs every year. Uh, and all of our production fix facilities occur in Texas, Kansas, South Carolina, Georgia, uh, in Iowa, Nebraska, and Minnesota. All those locations make up where our employee owners are at. And the interesting thing about the employee owners, uh, Paul Engler decided that he wanted his company that he founded to be employee owned. So through a course of a series of years, the employees purchased more and more of the company. And in 2010, we became 100% employee owned. But along with making sure that we had beef and pork available to all that wanted to purchase it, available to feed a hungry world, Paul was always working in the community. And both the Engler family has been very, very active in serving their community. In 2018, uh, the board of directors of Cactus Feeders challenged Shelby and I to create a nonprofit on behalf of the employee owners, and that is Cactus Cares. And so Cactus Cares was founded based on the fact that we wanted to feed a hungry world, but we know in these communities across these seven states that we have the, uh, our employee owners working in, it's important that we take care of our communities as well. With our origins being in a beef and pork company, that's really why we focused on hunger relief and especially making sure that protein is available to food pantries and other groups in our local communities that are working to feed a hungry world. And over the last four years, it's been a joy to really expand the tent, if you will, and bring in other organizations and other partners to Cactus Cares as we work to achieve that mission. Well, how amazing. So with that, you know, you talk about a hungry world and taking care of your community. So are you working just in the United States or are you branching out to the world? What does that impact look like for Cactus Cares? You know, that's a great question. Uh, our focus is in the United States and specifically that we uh, in the communities that we live and work. Shelby talked a little bit about the, uh, the most important pillar or the one that we have to spend a lot of time on and that's hunger relief. What we have found in our research is, is that these small agricultural communities, they're very underserved, okay? Uh, they don't have the resources to uh, that maybe some of the larger city uh, uh, that happens with the larger cities. But in these specific communities, we have things that are working for us. Number one, our employees work in these and live in these communities that we have our farms and our feed yards and our location. The second thing is our partners, those vendors that help us and join us in feeding a hungry world. They live and work in these communities. And we think it's important that we also take care of our friends and our families and around these communities because this is where we're at and we want to take care of them first. Yeah, Shay, I think that's a great question. A lot of times when people hear the term food insecurity, their mind goes to third world countries and places internationally. But the truth is that there's food insecurity here in the United States as well. And it just varies depending on that community, what the numbers look like. But for example, Texas, where we're located, will run at about 13% of the population qualifies as food insecure. And Nebraska, a familiar area for you, would run at about 10% of the population being food insecure. And so we really wanna address those problems here, taking care, like Wayne said, of our family, friends, and neighbors, and then maybe one day expand internationally, but really taking care of those problems here nationally first. Well, I think it's really important that you're doing that because I know food insecurity immediately, I mean, I'm guilty of my mind first goes to third world, world countries, but yet you look at the amount of backpack programs, you look at even um, local food pantries, how much they're, how often they're asking for donations. It is a huge problem in our own country that we need to take care of our own people too. So with that, do you want to talk a little bit more about the process of how you're getting protein to these communities, to the food insecure, and what that looks like. Yeah, uh, one of the important things to understand about food insecurity and understanding that, and I think it's important to talk a little bit about what that means. So the USDA 
defines food insecurity as lack of resources in order to secure a consistent supply of nutrition in order to live a healthy lifestyle. Okay, you know, Shelby talked about internationally, but that looks much different. We think it's important to focus on ins uh, food insecurity in the United States. And being a beef and pork production company, we also think it's important that we secure and provide resources as it relates to animal protein, specifically to beef and pork. So what that looks like is the series of programs that we have in place, we wanna make sure that we provide that to those organizations that are right there in the community, that know the community, that know those individuals and how to serve them best. Yeah, like Wayne talked about, we really want to be present in those rural agricultural communities where we have operations and other people in agriculture have operations as well. Those small communities where the food pantry is maybe serving 50 to 100 people every month, but is truly making an impact in that community. And so one of the ways we really work to build a supply for those food pantries is through our POWER program. And POWER is an acronym. It stands for Protein Outreach with Educational Resources. And it started with actually a local organization asking us to supply some hamburger patties. And so we started looking at the different places that we could source that meat from. And previously we'd given them dollars and they take those dollars and have to try and source that meat from a store and get it at a price that made sense for them and in quantities that made sense for them. So if you look at price options, typically those five pound chubs of ground beef, for example, are going to be the most economical but then you have to deal with separating the five pounds out, which can create food safety issues, or it limits you to giving the five pounds chub to a family that can utilize it in a couple of meals worth versus those one pound chubs that are very efficient for senior citizens and smaller families that normally utilize these types of food pantries. So this group made the request for us to get those hamburger patties and we started looking at different options. And one of our employee owners here said, why don't you go to West Texas A&M University? They're long on beef right now, so you'd be helping them out as well. So we went ahead and did that. And then we started thinking that this made a lot of sense. And so we started a partnership with West Texas A&M University where we would provide them, we'd provide a food pantry, a voucher for, for example, 200 pounds of ground beef. They'd take that voucher over to West Texas A&M Meat Lab and pick up that 200 pounds all in those one pound packages, they take it back and can just dis could distribute it in the community as they saw fit. This really allowed us to multiply the impact of our dollar. So now one dollar was able to support agricultural education, those animal science and meat science programs that are so critical to our operations, and also to support that local food pantry in providing them with the protein that they need to serve the under resource here in our community. So what started with West Texas A&M has now expanded to eight different universities across the country, and we're excited to continue to grow the programs and continue to expand those. We think it's very important to make sure that uh, animal protein is in this diet, because what, uh, what surveys have shown in the smaller rural food pantries, it is the most difficult item to get to put in that food basket. Uh, whether they're sourcing that from a food bank, a regional food bank, or even uh, obtaining that through uh, purchasing that through grocery stores is the most difficult thing to make. And we all know that uh, beef and pork protein is very important and very uh, critical to a balanced diet to allow individuals to grow and to be healthy and to continue to uh, prosper. And I felt like I had some experience coming into this. My mom had been a food pantry volunteer growing up, but as we've worked in these communities, it's really opened my eyes further to that, to the problems and to the lack, especially protein that some of these food pantries receive. We were at a food pantry in Iowa a few weeks ago, and they actually made a comment to us as we were dropping off ground beef that they hadn't had ground beef in their freezer for almost seven years. And so we're thrilled to be able to supply them that consistent access now, but it is a problem and it's a problem across, across the country in these small rural food pantries. Seven years is a long time, especially when I guess, I guess I get to the point where I have ground beef almost every day. <laughs> Absolutely. So with that, you have talked about how, did you say you've partnered with eight universities at this point? So That's correct. while you started serving 
in Texas, in Nebraska, in those other areas where you've had other employee owned businesses, if someone listening to the show is on the coasts and they want to get involved, can they contact you and get involved? Absolutely. I think a great example would be North Dakota State University. They've recently joined our power program. Cactus does not have any operations in the North Dakota area, but we made that connection with the university and they've been a great partner. They sponsored a 5K. We were able to raise some money. We matched the money and are now purchasing protein from the North Dakota State on-campus meat lab to provide for the North Dakota State on-campus food pantry to service those college students in that area. So no matter where you're located, we'd love to hear from you and work with you to see what we could do to best serve your community. Yeah, one of the things that's very important to Shelby and I, because it's just Shelby and I managing Cactus Cares, is that network of individuals that's out in the agricultural community, whether you're a producer, whether you are a supplier, whether you're a university student, whether you're interested in agriculture, being able to provide for your community, it doesn't even matter. It's important that we have those network of individuals that want to reach out and say, hey, I've got this organization that's doing a good job and they're struggling to provide protein. This may be an opportunity to work with you. So when you look at sources where you're getting protein from, you know, you talked a lot about the university side. Are there opportunities to make partnerships elsewhere where you don't have to source the protein from the universities? I mean, what does that, what do you need available when you're looking at where they can purchase this protein from or obtain it, I should say? Great question. We've found that the university is a great fit for us because it allows us to multiply the impact of that dollar and support animal science and meat science and also that food pantry. We also know that every community is different and that what works in some communities and some states may not work in all of them. And so our approach is very flexible. And like Wayne said, it's the two of us managing it. So we stay very nimble and are able then to work with that community to see what would work best for them specifically and make sure that we're doing it in the most efficient way for them and all the members of their community. Awesome. So when you look at helping tackle this food insecurity issue, what impacts is that making for small communities from their economic standpoint? Like what what is the impact of improving this issue in a small community? What does that look like? That particular question really gets to some of the basis of what we form Cactus Cares about. So uh, realize back in 2018 when Shelby and I started working together and we used all of her research as an intern in 2017 to develop what we would call the building blocks of what Cactus Cares is all about. Okay, Is one of the things that we wanted to make sure that is, is that Cactus Cares was something that everyone could rally around. And in food insecurity today, uh, the modern approach is much like a soup kitchen. You have an individual that's food insecure, you provide that one meal for them, and that allows them to eat for that given day. And a lot of research points to making sure that it's a little bit different. And maybe the approach instead of like a soup kitchen it needs to be like a potluck. If you think about a potluck dinner, okay, you have a lot of individuals bringing certain items. Uh, You may have individuals that bring cups and forks and somebody brings ice, somebody brings in hamburger patties, somebody may bring in that jello salad with marshmallows. Everyone brings in something different. But at the end of the day, when you put that all together and everyone gathers around the table, you're sharing in the same meal. Shelby and I want Cactus Cares to be just like that. We want everybody to contribute different things in the community. So some organizations, they may be able to provide that contact. Another group, they may provide serving those individuals that are food insecure. Someone like Cactus Cares, we may provide either leadership, guidance, connection, or even provide resources like uh, money and uh, uh, ground beef and ground pork. Regardless, you have all these individuals coming together. And at the end of the day, what happens is we all share in the same positive result. And that is we're all serving in our community. When you look at the direct impact that we've had in our communities, really over the last three years, 
will have provided about 140,000 pounds of ground beef and ground pork to those small rural food pantries, which would be the equivalent of about 560,000 servings that have impacted our family, friends, and neighbors here in those rural communities. And like I said earlier, we're looking to continue to expand that, grow that, and increase that impact even further. And that particular impact that Shelby talks about, we're very proud that we're able to provide that and provide those resources to that. But that would not be possible without the network of individuals, partners, and people out in these communities in order to make sure that that happens. Well, it does take a team. So yep. that is amazing to hear. I, and that's that's a lot of servings. Wow, that that's a lot of servings. So Shelby, you touched on it earlier, but how else are you showing up for communities and organizations and people in need outside of the hunger relief side of things? Yes, so hunger relief is our primary target. Our Cactus Feeders overall mission has always been feeding a hungry world, family, friends, and neighbors, and that ties right into our hunger relief efforts. But like we mentioned earlier, there are three other pillars that Cactus Cares focuses on. So leadership, we know that sometimes there's groups in, com in the community that have a really good heart and want to serve, but maybe something in their organization just isn't clicking. And so we've actually connected them with leaders or provided trainings ourselves that have allowed those organizations to continue to grow and flourish. A great example of that is an organization in South Carolina. There was a small church that was putting together a backpack program and they were putting together about 20 backpacks a week, which is fantastic. But the issue was that the need in that area was really about 250 backpacks every week. So those kids were on a waiting list and they would rotate. So you may get a bag one week and then you'd have to wait five or six weeks to get your next bag. And so we actually partnered with that organization, brought them out to Amarillo and provided them some training from Snack Pack for Kids, which is a large backpack organization here in Panhandle about how they could continue to grow their efforts and multiply them. And we also provided resources like Wayne talked about. And now that church has grown and is servicing all 250 of those students every single week. Another opportunity is, is to uh, educate and tell the story about agriculture and what it takes to feed a hungry world and specifically in serving your communities. Uh, Shelby and I've had great opportunities, whether we're speaking to 4-H groups or organizations, but one specifically that we're very proud of is, is back in 2020, we had an opportunity to participate in the World Food Prize. So we were able to put together a module uh, that talked about what food insecurity is, uh, what it means to elementary school kids, and also the challenge at the end of the uh, module was that uh, Shelby presented all the ingredients that would be in a weekend food bag and challenged the students to create their own recipes of serving that meal with those items in that list. So not only are we saying be aware there are individuals, even your fellow students, it could be food insecure, but also there's a level of opportunity to bring dignity and uh, celebrate the fact that individuals are providing that uh, those weekend food bags and it can be normal as well. And that final pillar would be community renewal. We know that every community is different and has its own needs. And so that community renewal can be a catch all, if you will, for some of those needs that maybe don't quite into fit into the other three pillars, but are critical to that community in continuing to grow. It also could be used, for example, if disaster were to hit a community. So yeah. those would be the four pillars. Yeah, we have one opportunity this, uh, this summer to participate in a program where some of our wing pigs were provided 4-H students, and those wing pigs were grown by those students, and we were able, uh, we, we sponsored them. And then when those uh, animals were shown and they were at market weight, Cactus repurchased those animals back, and then we donated that meat to the local food pantry. So now you have that complete cycle and that multiplication effect. So now what you're doing is participating in community renewal because you're growing those young students that wanna know more and really develop their ag skills. You're doing an opportunity in which uh, you're providing an education opportunity because they learn how to grow those animals. But the other thing as well is you're still continuing to provide that support for those local food pantries and providing protein. 
you have a lot going on, especially with just the two of you managing this right now. Wow. So do you rely a lot on volunteer bases for these projects or how else do you make all this happen? Well, we could always use more volunteers. Uh, a lot of our employee owners want to participate and we do get good participation. Uh, we've also uh, started to expand the opportunities for individuals to participate in the program to our other producers and to other uh, individuals in the industry, as well as our uh, partners in providing the services and goods that we use in our commercial operations. Well, amazing. So for those listeners out there, where can they go to get involved, to learn more, to contact you? Where can they go? I think the easiest thing for anyone to do to learn more would be to follow us on social media. We're present on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter under the handle Cactus Cares. And that's where we share really the most up-to-date information on uh, our program. So as we're going out to food pantries, we're taking pictures of deliveries and telling that story. We're promoting upcoming events, golf tournaments, anything like that. And so it would really be a great way for them to learn more about us and also see some of the ways that they could get involved. I would also encourage individuals that's hearing this podcast to learn more about what's going on in their community. You're going to have situations in which you have organizations, food pantries, churches, that talk about food drives, and talk about those uh, ways that they serve the food insecure. I would encourage all your listeners to find out more about that. The other thing is, is I think it's important for your listeners, whether they have an act background or not, to learn more about where your food comes from. Because one of the most important things is, is agriculture, everyone needs it, okay? It is important that if we're not continuing to do uh, and grow agriculture in a way that we can feed everyone and feed everyone that wants an opportunity to take advantage of all the goods that is provided by agriculture, then we're going to be in real difficulty. And it's it will continue to be more and more difficult to feed a hungry world. Well, thank you very much for being on the show today. Do you have any last words or parting thoughts you'd like to share before we wrap up? I just wanted to thank you again, Shay, for this opportunity and to all your listeners out there. We hope to hear from you and that you continue to learn about Cactus Cares, learn about the food insecurity in your community and how you can continue to help us fight that battle. And I would also like to thank you for the opportunity to speak to your listeners related to Cactus Cares and agriculture as a whole. But I would also encourage everyone, especially uh, youth and young people as well, is to continue to take chances and work towards feeding a hungry world. And I hope that many of you that are listening to this will join Shelby and I as we work in our communities and serve the under-resourced. Well, thank you both for being on the show today and uh, have a great rest of your day. Thank you. And that's a wrap on that one. Be sure to let me know your thoughts on the episode. And if you have any further questions around the topic, take care and have a great day.